Life happens fast. And in an instant, disaster could strike. When the choices you make mean the difference between life and death, what would you do? Put yourself to the test and see if you have what it takes to stay alive. Would you do or die? The running of the bulls in Pamplona, Spain. For eight wild days, these fearsome creatures charge through eager crowds of mostly young men on a half-mile stampede to the bull ring. For many, it's an exhilarating triumph. But serious injuries do occur on these narrow streets, some resulting in death. Today, recent college graduate Marcus Wolf is joining the crowd. He spent the past week backpacking across Europe. And now, this young buck is ready to test his mettle as a man. Rockets fire, and the run begins. The bulls barrel through the streets at 15 miles per hour and charge straight toward a spot known as Dead Man's Corner. It's a brutally sharp right turn known to cause pileups as runners squeeze through. As Marcus finds out when he suddenly trips. He's down, right in front of a crushing stampede of charging bulls. Now, tie on a red bandana and take Marcus's place. You've just fallen on Dead Man's Corner. The bulls are bearing down. What would you do? A, protect your vital organs by kicking the bulls away. B, get to your feet and hide in a doorway. Or C, cover your head and let the bulls run you over. Here's what you should consider. You're on the ground, on a narrow street, with the thundering sound of angry bulls closing in behind you. Each beast stands close to five feet tall and can weigh over 1,300 pounds, as much as five sumo wrestlers. These lumbering creatures have bad traction on slick streets. But who needs steady feet when you have two foot-long horns designed to inflict maximum damage to any who stand in their way? These pointed weapons have fatally injured 15 people throughout the history of this festival. If you don't want to be next, carefully make your choice. A. B. Or C. So, what would you do? If you're worried about being crushed by these massive bovines, you might think to kick the bulls away in an effort to protect yourself. Just ask any MMA fighter. Lying on your back in the guard position is an excellent defensive posture in a fight. While thigh muscles are among the largest in the entire body, Able to press hundreds of pounds, there's simply no match for a 1,300-pound bull bearing down on you. Plus, by sticking your legs into the air, you put them at risk of being impaled on the bull's horns. If that happens, you'd be helpless, as over half a ton of seething muscle drags your body down the street. 
choose to kick the animals away, and you aren't running with the bulls, you're dying with them. Knowing you're no match for the bulls, you may choose to scramble to your feet and hide in a doorway. But is this really your best move? With over 3,000 people all looking for escape, doorways and small hiding spots quickly become dangerous bottlenecks, where bulls are free to hone in for the attack. And if you're scrambling to your feet when the bulls close in, you've just given them a bigger profile to hit. If you chose to stand and hide in a doorway, the streets could run red with your blood. So, what should you do? There are no guarantees, but your best bet is to let the bulls run over you while covering your head. Attracted to movement, the bulls will be far more concerned by the commotion of the crowd than a speed bump like you. You may suffer a few bruises on your body, but it's better than getting a horn in your backside. If you're lucky, you may even come away unscathed. Bulls will sometimes jump over people that have fallen down to avoid tripping themselves. As for Marcus, he's lucky to be alive. Not only did he try to kick away the charging bulls, but he also fell right in a cramped doorway. A bull slams into him at full speed. One of its horns pierces his thigh and cuts deep into his hip, missing the femoral artery by near centimeters. Though he has a broken hip, he'll make a full recovery. Marcus now knows you cover your head and let the bulls run you over. That's what you do to avoid a gory end. Did you survive being trampled by the bulls? The danger's not over yet. You're about to get another shot to do or die. The LA River system. Most of the time, much of it is dry. But heavy rains can create a sudden danger. Flash floods. A wall of water charges downhill at speeds up to 70 miles an hour, fast enough to even catch city construction workers off guard. In LA County, there's an average of 60 swift water rescues every year. And right now, no one needs saving more than a teenage boy who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. This is a very deadly, dangerous situation right now. A pararescuer lowers into position. 20 feet, 10 feet, 5 feet, and he got him! But this river isn't done with him yet. The pararescue man is let go. He couldn't hang on. It's do or die on the L.A. river system. He's out of control going down this river. A teenage boy has been swept up in a deadly flash flood. It's a horrifying sight. Now take a deep breath and jump into the perilous waters to see if you'd survive. The sky is just not having any luck at this point. A rescuer carefully positions himself downstream to save you. 30 feet, 20 feet, 10 feet, 5 feet. He makes the grab. But loses his grip. Your best shot at rescue couldn't hang on. Now it's up to you to do or die. Here he goes. Into the water, into the wash. What would you do? A. Swim for the river's edge to get closer to rescuers. B. Conserve energy by performing a survival float. Or C, steer to safety using your head as a rudder.
Here's what you should consider. You're freezing cold, caught in a flash flood, and so far unable to reach rescue. Oh, just a matter of inches. Traveling 25 miles per hour, the water is a frigid 50 degrees. At this temperature, your hands begin to numb, and disorientation kicks in within 15 minutes, exactly as long as you've been in the water. To make matters worse, urban river channels collect more than just rain. Appliances, shopping carts, even cars are abandoned in these concrete waterways. This junk can become jagged traps that can keep you pinned below the surface. It's decision time, and you've got three options. Make your choice. A. B. Or C. So, what would you do? If you want to inch closer to the rescuer's reach, then you may try to swim to the edge of the channel. Swimming is a rigorous exercise, one that requires energy and strength. But you're on the verge of hypothermia and total exhaustion. The more you wear yourself down, the sooner you go under. And that means rescuers have less time to save you. Even if emergency workers manage to reach you fast enough, you could still be too fatigued to grab a lifeline. If you chose to swim for the river's edge, you chose wrong. If expending energy by swimming would leave you dead tired, you could try to conserve what energy you have left by performing the dead man's float. This survival technique is used by sailors stranded at sea to conserve energy while they wait for rescue. Saving energy is good, but giving up control and visibility by lying face down, that's bad. Considering you're moving close to 100 yards every seven seconds, you could collide headfirst into debris or the concrete pier of a bridge. Even worse, you could pass a rescue line and not even know it. If you chose to perform a survival float, you'd be dead in the water. So, what should you do? If you want to survive this ferocious flash flood, the right thing to do is to point your feet downstream and steer to safety using your head as a rudder. It's called the ferry angle. First, point your head toward the bank, letting the water push against the broadside of your body guiding you closer to the river's edge. Then, extend your legs in front of you, using them to kick away debris and take the impact of any collisions. This allows you to keep your eyes open for an opportunity to escape, like a rescue line strung across the river. But don't rely on your numb, frozen hands. The 25 mile an hour flow is pushing against you with more than 1,600 pounds of force per square inch, enough to move a full-sized cement truck. If you want to hang on, you need to hook your arms over the rope so it runs from armpit to armpit across your chest. Using this technique will assist emergency personnel to help save you from a swift water disaster. Remember to use your head as a rudder. That's what you do He's out of the water if you don't want to die. 
so you manage to survive the river's wrath. But don't rest yet. We're putting you to the test once again. Chengdu, a bustling metropolis in the heart of China. As many people live here as in New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago combined. Then, one afternoon, with no warning at all, nature unleashes its destructive fury. One of the deadliest earthquakes of all time. It's an average day in Chengdu, China. Until the city is suddenly rocked by a natural disaster of epic proportions. A massive 8.0 earthquake. The fault line is deep below the earth, where two opposing land masses press against each other, building up more and more pressure, until finally one side slips releasing as much energy as a thousand atomic bombs. For the people in this eight-story office building, shaking earth and falling debris spell disaster. For two whole minutes, the structure is brutally rattled and now coming apart at the seams. The building is collapsing. Brace yourself and step into this killer quake. What would you do? A. Stay put and take cover. B. Take shelter in a doorway. Or C. Run for the closest exit. Here's what you should consider. You're caught in an 8.0 quake on the first floor of an eight-story office building. And the walls around you are beginning to collapse. Above you, concrete and steel begin to buckle. A building this size can weigh as much as 15,000 tons nearly twice as heavy as a Navy destroyer. You might think most new buildings in earthquake zones are built on dampers or rollers to absorb movement. But those systems are still surprisingly rare. Any second now, the whole thing is coming straight down on you. Make your choice. A. B, or C. So, what would you do? With the building giving way, you could run for the closest exit and try to get out in the open. But can you get there in time? This building is literally falling apart and you're being showered with debris. A piece of concrete the size of a cinder block, falling just six feet, hits with enough force to snap your spine in two. But that's not the only danger. As the walls and ceiling split, electrical wiring becomes exposed. If you come in contact with a live wire, your heart can easily go into cardiac arrest. Try to sprint to safety, and you'd be a moving target in a deadly obstacle course. With the exits out of reach and debris falling all around, you may choose to take shelter in a doorway. 
This age-old belief has been around a long time. Back to when masonry and adobe were common construction materials. Back then, door frames may have remained standing as brick walls tumbled down around them. But modern doorways are no stronger than any other part of the building. Take shelter in a doorway as a building collapses, and you may be locking in your fate. So what should you do? If you want to survive a building collapse, the best thing to do is stay put and take cover by a large piece of furniture, like your desk. Seeking shelter under your desk can protect you from smaller debris. But it also increases your odds that you'll be in a space that rescue professionals call a survivable void. A heavy piece of furniture can create a safe pocket by holding up parts of the fallen ceiling and walls, like a jack. Once the dust settles, Search your surroundings for metal piping and tap an SOS with a piece of concrete or metal. Rescuers have found people who've survived days, even weeks, after a collapse. In Chengdu, nearly five and a half million buildings are obliterated by the quake. For those caught in a collapse, there is no guarantee of survival. But take the right steps, and you just might make it out alive. Take cover under a large piece of furniture. That's what you do if you don't want to die.